Welcome to the Four Bells Fitness Emporium. Here we are doing workout from home number 75. As Ontario heads into lockdown number three, if this were an action movie franchise, this would be called Rise of the Lockdowns or Revenge of the Lockdowns. But don't worry about the lockdowns. We are still here to make sure that you guys get your fitness in, even if you cannot get to the gym. So what are we up to today in the gym? Today we are up to a lower body day. In particular, kind of doing some pre-fatigue work to build on pistol squats, which is what we're looking for in our leg day today. So to get us ready for pistol squats, what are we gonna do? We're gonna do a few things to get us ready. We're gonna warm up today, we've got three things, which we're gonna do three times, three rounds, if you will. We're gonna start off with a single arm glute bridge. We're gonna do five per side. From there, we're gonna do some hip circles, doing 10 on one leg and 10 on the other, five in each direction, but we'll talk about that in a second. And then from there, some froggers, which is a way of doing not only the little animal crawl, but also getting used to being in deep, squatty positions. We're gonna do these three things three times with the warm up. Let's see how they should look. With the single arm glute bridge, what we're trying to do is open the hips, get the glutes active, and as well as work a little bit of rotation in the spine. So in terms of how to get started, you need to have the hands by the hips. Depending on how your shoulders like it, fingers can be forwards to the side. And what I'm thinking is, I'm gonna drive both feet into the floor, bring one hand up. As I drive up, I'm gonna rotate the cross and reach. I come back down, switch the hands. Hand in the middle, hips up, rotate and reach. That's what we're looking for. Switching the hands, going from side to side. As we're driving the hips up, Reaching with the hand and trying to mobilize the spine. Five per side equals 10. With the hip circle, we're looking to get into almost like a dead bug position. So that means to push the one back into the floor. If the hands up to the ceiling helps you, cool. I'm gonna bring both feet up and then from here we're gonna do some hip circles. So that means I'm gonna extend the leg out, bring the leg back in, and then I'm gonna reverse the direction. So that means every time I go out, that's one. And then reverse the direction, that's two. We're then going to do that 10 times per leg, trying to open up those hips as we get ready for squatting and pistoling and deadlifting. Five per side, not five per side, 10 per side. With the frogger, we've got to be a frog. So that means we have to get down into a squatty position. So that means hips low, knees out. What I'm trying to think about doing is how far out can I reach depending on my hip mobility. So you might find a little hand movements and little hops. It might be just little hands and then just a little hop for you if you've got tight hips. You may be able to reach way out, bring the feet in a lot. Either way, we're going to do 10, nice and slow and smooth. Froggers, making sure we're reaching out and then always, if we can, coming into that deep squat position every single rep. 10 of your finest froggers. For our strength piece today, we are doing a couple of exercises as a pre-fatiguer to the main event, which is going to be pistol squats today. So we're looking at three different exercises. So how's it going to work in our structure for our strength piece today? Well, we're doing four sets. Each set is going to be four and a half minutes long, four minutes 30, split into three 90 second windows of time. So in 90 second number one, we're going to be looking at cyclist squats. So it basically means a form of squat with an elevated heel. So we're going to talk about how to do that in a second. But what we're really trying to do is overemphasize the VMO, the vastus medialis obliquus, which is the medial or inside head of your quadricep, which is a guy that's really important, not only for knee stability and knee strength, but essential if you want to get into a deep, dark pistol squat. From there, we're going to try and warm up the posterior chain and get that posterior chain nice and active. You've got choices. Are you at home with a barbell? Maybe you're going to do 10 conventional deadlifts. Maybe if you're at home with limited resources, you'll be doing single deadlifts for five per side. Last but not least, the main event it is pistol squats today. We're going to be doing three on our less strong leg first, trying to make that weaker guy catch up, and then we're going to be doing three on our stronger leg second. So if we can, in our cycling squats, we're going to talk about how to get them heavier, but if we can, try and get progressively heavier as the five, sorry, four sets go on. With our deadlifts, we're going to see if we can get a little bit heavier as well each set. And with the pistol squats, we are looking for delicious chef's kiss pistols. That's what we're doing today for four glorious sets. Let's talk about all three of those guys right about now. With cyclist squat, what we're looking to do is overload the quadriceps, the thighs. 
Wine needs a slightly elevated surface. So if you're a fancy person and you have, what's well, like a squat stand, almost like a little wedge, maybe it's 45 degrees, maybe a little bit lower, but they don't necessarily need that. All you need is something to put your heels up on. So I would say roughly about the length of your index finger is what we need to be putting our heels onto, which is about that with a plate. It doesn't have to be super high. It could be a pair of books. It could be even some rolled up towels if they're very firm. So with that in mind, I'm gonna put my heels up and I'm gonna have my toes pointing straight forward, fairly close stance. When I'm doing my cycling squats, the emphasis is the vertical torso position. So in a normal squat, where you're used to starting and pushing the hips back and initiating from there, with cyclist squat, we're looking to initiate with the knees coming forwards. So I keep the torso upright, I allow the knees to track forwards, keeping the torso as vertical as possible. At the bottom, it should be a ton of contact between hamstring and calf. From there, keeping the torso vertical, we're not allowing the torso to dip forwards, we stand back up. So if you can do 12 reps with body weight, then we add a little weight to the situation. I would recommend if you're new to cyclist squats or you haven't done a lot of them, don't do anything in a back rack, like a barbell back rack situation, in case anything goes a little bit squirrely. Torso stays vertical, knees come forwards, compression at the bottom, we stand back up, 12 of your finest cyclist squats. Depending on what you have available, it's gonna depend on what type of deadlift you do today. So if you've got a barbell, you can be doing conventional barbell deadlifts today for 10 reps. Maybe if you don't have a barbell, Actually, you could, if you have like two heavy dumbbells, you could do conventional deadlifts with dumbbells, maybe you do with two heavy kettlebells. But of course, if you've got limited resources, then a single leg deadlift is fantastic as well. So if we're doing conventional deadlifting, there is a ton of nuances when it comes to doing conventional deadlifting. We're not going to do an hour-long lecture on that. We'll do a very quick few seconds. Setup should be approximately hip width. If I look down, the bar should cover the bow in my shoelaces. From here, we set the hands up on the bar first, nice and even on the bar, hips down, chest high. I should be able to feel the hamstrings, feel the glutes before I go. Shoulders and hips raised together. When I get to the knees, I push the hips through. I push the hips back, back, back until I get to the knees, and then shoulders and hips come down together. So the way up and the way down should be mirrors of each other. And of course, no stripper deadlifting. Protect your lovely spine as you deadlift. So of course, if beautiful conventional barbell deadlifts are not for you, then a single leg deadlift could work very well as well. But what I need to think about, different to a conventional deadlift, I'm going to be doing more of an RDL, a Romanian deadlift, which means more hinge, so loading the hamstring, loading the glute, far less bringing the hips down. So if I'm doing a single leg deadlift, I stand on one leg, keeping the chest up, I point the chest to the wall as I send the hip back, Bring the torso close to parallel, squeeze the glute on the standing leg when I stand up, and hinging back. Of course, if you want to add some weight to the situation, if balance is good for you, then I recommend doing it on the opposite side. So if I'm standing on my right leg, holding on with the left hand, I hinge back, drive the hip through, squeeze the glute, and we should do five per side. So 10 conventional deadlifts for a barbell, maybe, and five per side of a single leg deadlift. With the pistol squat, there's probably three, I say, most common types of, uh, I suppose, scaling of options, depending on what you have available at home. So those three options that we see the most are usually sitting back onto a bench or a box, holding onto rings or straps of the TRX, or holding onto a post or a door frame or a door. So again, it's entirely up to you what you have available, but what we need to be thinking about, particularly with the pistol squat, is reality. What does that mean when it comes to pistol squats? That means not fooling yourself about what range of motion you're going through. So regardless of whether I'm sitting back onto a box, holding some straps, holding onto the door, we want to get in the fullest and deepest range of motion that we can control. And of course, from there, we want to be building on it and building on a greater range of motion as time goes on. So if I have a box, I should be thinking to myself, it's the same as a regular squat, I'm just on one leg, which means I initiate with the hip, I should be reaching back with the hip, other leg is out of the counterbalance, I touch down, and from there I drive back up, squeeze the glutes as we stand. Reach back, touch down, drive back up. From there, if I'm using TRX or straps or rings or anything like that, I'll probably say moving back from the pillar point where it's attached a little bit, and then from there, it's using the arms to assist me in helping with balance. Which means from here, if I'm coming all the way down, ideally trying to get the hamstring to smush the calf, 
just like we did in cyclist squats, and then use the hands just enough to assist me. I don't want to be doing a chin up and a pistol, just use the hands just enough. We come all the way down, low as we can, making sure we're not shifting back, shin stays forwards, and we stand up for them. Last but not least, what I'd like to call the hand over hand method, or the monkey method, you've got to think about you climbing a post like a little monkey. I'm going to stand on the post, legs extended, from here I feed the hands down to the bottom position, and then I use the hands just enough to help me stand up. So with our pistols today, we are doing three per side. Pick your second strongest side first, and then your, your strongest side second. Pistols, three and three. With the conditioning piece today, we have a 12 minute AMRAP. 720 seconds of joy. What does an AMRAP mean? It means as many rounds as possible. And in our rounds today, we have a few things to do. We have six little parts to do. We have a descending rep scheme. So we have 30 reps of kettlebell swings, and then we have an aerobic piece. Then we have 20 reps of a slam ball squat or a squat of some kind. And then I have the nice little aerobic piece again. And then from there, I have 10 ball slams, maybe with the slam ball, maybe. And then again, another little aerobic piece. So we got ourselves like a triple decker aerobic descending rep sandwich. So many things to do. What we need to think about is when we're starting our workout, it says 200 meters, 20 cows, maybe 50 jumping jacks or 50 skips. Of course, it's all about what you have at home. So if that means you can run down the street for 100 meters, turn around and come back, fantastic. If you have a rowing machine at home, maybe you can do 200 meters. If you're thinking to yourself, I have an airdyne bike, maybe you can do 20 calories. And if you don't have anything apart from maybe even just a skipping rope, you can do 50 turns of a rope or 50 jumping jacks or high knees in place. It should take you around 30-ish to 45-ish seconds-ish. Don't get too caught up with how much time it should take. We're just trying to be consistent with those distances or those efforts as we go through the AMRAP. Let's take a little bit of time now we've got the aerobic piece out of the way to see how the swings, squats, and slams should look in our AMRAP today. With our kettlebell swings, we are looking to do 30 reps today. So a fairly high volume, ideally we're doing them all in a row unbroken, which means we don't put the kettlebell down. But of course, remembering what you have available. You can do swings with a kettlebell, you can also do single arm swings with a dumbbell, you can also do it with two dumbbells outside of the hips. Of course, if you need any guidance on how to do that, send us a little message, we'll happily show you how. When it comes to a kettlebell swing or any kind of swing, what we're looking for is a dynamic hip displacement, which is a very fancy way of saying, I close my hip, and then I open my hip with force. So what we're looking to do is load the posterior chain. So that means if I set up for my kettlebell, if I have my feet either side of the kettlebell, I take one step back, I'm gonna triangulate the position between my big toes and my kettlebell handle. From here, I'm gonna push my hips back, load the hamstring, load the glute, chest is nice and high, spine neutral. We pull into the hips and snap forwards. So the top of each swing should be glutes engaged, quads engaged, abs engaged, and we are doing 30 of your finest reps in a row. With our squats today, it says slam ball squat in the workout, but just because it says slam ball doesn't mean it has to be a slam ball. If you don't have one at home, it could be any kind of front loaded squat. So that could be a kettlebell goblet squat, it could be holding a dumbbell. If you're really, really feeling dangerous, it could be a front rack barbell. But either way, we're looking to do 20 reps, and ideally 20 reps in a row. So make sure you choose your weight accordingly. If I'm going to use a slam ball, all we need to do is what we like to call cuddle style, which means I'm going to give the slam ball a cuddle. It's going to sit in the crook of my elbows, and I'm going to use a little grip that I've taken from my old jiu-jitsu days, which is called a gable grip, where I lock the hands over. When I do my squats, all I'm thinking is, do not let my hands come down. If I lose my hands, it means the upper back is round. Of course, if I'm holding this like a kettlebell, all I'm trying to think of is keeping the torso upright as I perform my squats. So whether it's a slam ball, kettlebell, or a dumbbell, 20 reps in a row, keep your torso nice and upright. When it comes to ball slams, the setup and the finish of each rep should look identical. How should they look? We should have our feet either side of the ball, we should have our hips low, and we should have our chest high. So what we're trying to avoid is the opposite of this position, which of course is hips high, chest low, which doesn't look too sexy at all. 
So always hips low, chest high. We come up, overhead, slam the ball down. We see a lot of people picking the ball up and then just letting gravity do the work. That is not the aim of the game. We're thinking sledgehammer strike. We're thinking Hulk smash. We want to be smashing the ball into the floor with force. So we reach up, finishing with hips low, chest high. 10 of your finest ball slams. Now, of course, a slam ball is a nice luxury to have. So what do you do if you don't have a ball to slam? The answer is the old shin grabber sit-up. Replicates a nice aggressive piece of hip flexion or closing of the hip. Heels on the floor, hands on the floor. I explode up and grab those shins. So feet down on the floor, I pull the legs in. We come apart. And 10 of your finest shin grabbers. So 12 minute hand wrap, we do 200 meters, 20 counts, 50 jumping jacks or skips. From there, 30 kettlebell swings, 200 meters again, 20 slam ball or something else squats, 200 meters again, 10 of your finest ball slams or shin grabbers, and we go round and around for 12 delightful minutes. Have fun, let us know how you get on, and enjoy workout from home number 75.